Okay, so this is my MacBook running Windows 98 uh, in DOSBox uh, and actually running it through Windows 10 uh, and it works fine. But I did have trouble trying to get Windows 98 to work on uh, my Pi. So I've gone for Windows 95 in the end because the installation is a lot simpler. So let's move over to the left a bit. Uh, I'll just plug in my Pi and get it booting. So that's starting up now. And just to the left you can see there's a Compaq Armada E500 and uh, this runs Windows XP but it also runs Windows 98, uh, it dual boots. So if I restart it, you'll be able to see it dual boot while this is doing stuff in the background. And I've got another video actually on both of these computers on my channel uh, doing various different things, but this is a real piece of kit. Uh, it's a uh, 1999, I think it is, and it cost me 33 pound. Um, but, uh, but it runs really well, especially the old games. So you can see now it's booted up Dospian, which is a 486DX emulator on the Raspberry Pi. So let's do uh, boot dash LC and show you how quick it starts up. Oh, and let's pick Windows 98. So Windows 98 is booting up on here. Just press return on my Raspberry Pi. There you go, so now we've got 95, 98, and 98 running on my Mac. But uh, we'll switch over now to screen capture on the Pi, uh, because I want to show you a bit more about how well Windows 95 runs. Okay, so you can see I've got some folders on the desktop. Actually, this is a zip, so I need to install uh, something to unzip that. Um, but I've got an emulator here uh, with Spectrum Games, uh, which is from years ago I had that, and Destruction Derby as well. But let's just go through the menus and show you how quick and snappy it is. So accessories, you can see everything comes up nice. So if I go for, uh, say for instance, drive space, I mounted a, an A drive, a floppy drive, but I haven't done anything with it yet, but you can use it uh, and you can put floppy disk images on there uh, if you want to add to it. So if we look at this, so I've got 766 megabytes uh, space. This is a two gig image that you create when you put Windows 95 on. So you've got quite a lot of space there really um, to be able to put things on because obviously the programs are a lot smaller than they are now. So multimedia, oh I've got media player. I didn't think I had media player on there. Uh, sound recorder, volume control, system tools, notepad as simple as it is. So I installed, uh, you might have seen right at the start, I had um, Word 7, which is I have with my first Windows computer. So if I click on Word, there you go, comes up with that splash screen, and you can see it looks super basic. Uh, so test Raspberry Pi for Windows 95. So, does it have a spell check on there? So if I do raspberry, it does. Left, uh, right click, change it to raspberry, look at that. Uh, and then you can see this is perfectly usable. If you wanted an offline computer to be able to, uh, to write on uh, and you wanted it to be secure, then because this wouldn't be on the web, you could perfectly use this to, to write things with. Oh, nice font. Let's get that a bit bigger. Now, I was going to put an image on here, and in fact, I haven't done it yet. So let's show how that's done. Uh, so if I save that in my documents, nice long file name. Uh, and if I shut down, you'll see it shuts down in the normal way. Okay, so we're back in Raspberry Pi OS uh, to get our files and images and various things that we want. I found a great site called oldversion.com uh, where you can do a search for different programs. So in this case, WinZip, and it tells you that it works with Windows 95. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of things on here. Um, but I was just doing a search for Winamp and this came up. Uh, anyway, I've downloaded Winamp, I downloaded WinZip. So let's close that page down. I put them in a folder called W95 for now. Uh, let's just cut that and we're going to pop that onto our Windows SD card. 
So I put my SD card into an adapter, pop it into the Pi, and it will show up. There's boot and root. Root is the one we want. I'll just close down these two and open up root. And when you want to transfer things over, if you go to the home folder, Pi, and Dospian, just while I'm here, uh, one of the things I had real trouble with uh, was a file in here, uh, which is oh, a configuration file, DOSBox SVN. You'll see it mentioned in some of the tutorials of how to do it. My suggestion is to download the one that's in the tutorial. Uh, I copied through all the tutorial, copied things over and put things where I thought they should be and it still didn't work for me. This file basically sets up what sort of computer you're using uh, and it tells Windows 95 all that information. And there was one thing in here, uh, this no sound bit, it starts off as true, you need it to say false so that you get audio. Uh, I haven't really done loads of testing on audio but the Windows sounds were working. Um, so let's go back to where we were so uh, click on the Dospian one and image and then we can pop it in there so I'm calling this W95 doesn't really matter what you call it but if you stick to short file names uh, or file or folder names uh, it's a lot easier right so now we've got that in the right place we need to shut this down and this is definitely one of the things I struggle with the most getting uh, programs files onto the Pi after I'd created Windows uh, I just I struggled with it for a long time and then I went on to the Facebook group for Dospian and uh, a suggestion came up to try Norton Commander and it's great so let's go to C colon and uh, DIR and this will show us what we've got on here and the one we want is NC uh, so CD NC and then type NC again to launch it. And the good thing about this is it gives you access to the C drive, which is the Windows image, the two gig image you've created. And without this, it's it's really tricky. So we need to change the left-hand side, or this is the way I do it, change the left-hand side to F, and there you can see there's that image folder. So if I double click on that, you can use this a bit like Windows in the way that you can drag. Uh, so on the right hand side C is what I want it on and I use a folder called all F for all folders uh, so if I find that Windows 95 folder drag that over to all F and you can see it says copy because I was trying to do it before with uh, copy star dot star uh, command and it was loads of things it wasn't copying over uh, but since I've used this it's great right so press F10 to quit and hit yes so now we go uh, boot dash L C hit enter and it will do a scan disk as it normally does Okay, so now let's start it up. Let's go to my computer and C and look for that folder. In my case was all F and there it is, W95. So in here, we've got an MP3 file. Although it doesn't know what to open that with, look. Surely the media player would open that. No, so this was before MP3s were were widely used. It's funny how you forget. So the main thing for this was to put an image into my Word document. So let's go back to my Word document. Let's tidy some of this up. Cut the, the RAM working well, look, multitasking. So if I go to documents, test is the document I created earlier on. And now I always used Publisher 98 for, for ages and ages. It did everything I wanted it to do. The one thing I don't like about Word is the way it deals with images. I think it's changed now, um, but I've always used Publisher or PowerPoint. Okay, so let's do insert and picture and see. Oh, Word cannot convert to graphics file because no printer has been selected in file print. So maybe I have to do something about setting up a printer Seems weird, you'd think you'd be able to just 
No, it doesn't, doesn't seem to want to do it. Uh, right, so let's cancel that. Let's not worry about that anyway. Uh, and I'll close down. Do I want to save? Yes. And let's go back to that folder that I've put in. Well, let's close this one. Uh, so none of these are going to work then. You don't get previews, do you? View list, large icons, small icons. Yeah, there's no previews there. That. This is a JPEG, but I don't think it's going to open with anything. Oh, look at that. It opens with Internet Explorer because there's nothing else to open it. Look at the res. This isn't... Oh, it's showing it very, very big for whatever reason. Uh, oh, actually, so it's a two megapixel photo. So that would make sense. So it's a two megapixel photo and... As you can see, uh, it doesn't seem to scale you... Gosh. Yeah, Internet Explorer was a lot more basic back then. Anyway, so at least that works. It shows the image. Right, so if I wanted to install one of these programs, let's try Winamp and see what happens. Looks like it's going to work. I think I'll put AOL music icons on the desktop. Oh, I want it let me. Look at that, it's, the tick stays. Well, that's that's smaller, so let's deal with that and see if we get that AOL icon on the desktop. And they should play MP3s after this. Whoa. Look at that. Yes, allow anonymous usage. Winamp update site, close. Run Winamp. I haven't got any audio for, oh, internet cannot open the internet. Oh, that's all right. Close that. So, well, hopefully audio will come out. I can't hear it because I haven't got any speakers on this setup. It really whips the llama's ass. So I guess I'm going to find out afterwards. Right, so if I want to open a file, can I drag files in? move with these folders 640 by 480 doesn't give you a lot of space right so that's an mp3 file or oh, it doesn't want to drag it in there but let me drag it over to there yeah I'm guessing that was playing uh, I couldn't hear it but the uh, graphic equalizer was working so I'm guessing it was so let's close that down that installed very simply that's a weird icon for WinZip isn't it I think if you're interested in WinSip, see what it does with this Supercross folder. That'll be interesting. Oh, I've got my little Winamp agent down here now. Look. Cannot be installed under this version of Windows. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to unzip that at the moment. I'll have to play around with that and find out what, what else there is. So, last thing to show. Uh, would be a game. So let's go over Destruction Derby and double click. And I don't know why this runs so small. Oh, yeah, we're working. There was a on the reader. <laughs> good start. On the redefined controls, it gave me a quick steer option. I can't remember what button I on that but I'll just slow down to get around that's working all right though I can't get out oh there's some real car damage happening in there can I spin around oh nearly oh this guy's in first place that you might be able to hear a thunderstorm in the background so I might I might finish this video very soon rather than lose my pie to a thunderstorm Having a few graphical glitches, but uh, but not too bad. Go on, overtake the first. Yeah, that 
that actually plays all right. Can't complain about that. Right, so let's quit out of that. You see the menus work nice and fast, although that bit seems seems a bit slower than you'd expect it to be. There you go, and quit out of that. Okay, so I think pretty good so far. I'm gonna keep playing around with it and experimenting, but, uh, but yeah, so far so good. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.